Welcome to the tutorial, Manipulating a Deformer to Create Animation. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate using the bones and articulation deformers as well as the curved deformers. So to begin, we have to make sure that we are not in the setup mode. Um, if you are, any movements that you're making will actually be changing the original resting pose. So be sure that you're not on that mode, but you should be sure that you are in the animate mode with the transform tool selected. So if we uncollapse our layer here, our Karate Rabbit full front group, we can see that it's this template that was taken from the library and it's been extended for 40 frames all the way down. So what I'm going to do here is animate the Karate Rabbit uh, doing a jump. So I'm going to start by putting him in a crouching position and then having him shoot upwards. So let's start by animating his legs by bending them into the starting position. So let's start with leg number one over here. If I select it in the camera view uh, with the transform tool on, you can see that it turns pink and that this bounding box surrounds it. So we don't want to make any movements in this position because then we'll just be animating the drawing and not the deformation skeleton. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I move the leg like this, and then we find the leg in the timeline view, so here it is over here, what we really want to do is animate the deformation group above it. So if I use the keyboard shortcut B, I'll go up one level, and then I can hit this button here, show control. And we can see that the skeleton was left behind here, so I animated the drawing, but not the deformation skeleton. So let's undo that. And now that we're on the proper layer, so we're actually right here on the, the deformation layer for this leg, we can animate using the deformation skeleton. So I'm going to use this handle. Actually, let me zoom in. I'm going to use this handle here, connected to the deformation group, to move the whole leg like this. Then what I could do is grab either of the bones. I'm going to grab the shin bone here, and you can see that the cursor turns into the rotation cursor, and I can pull this leg down here like that to create a bend. I can also grab the entire deformation chain from the root and move it downwards if I want to reposition it slightly. And at this point, we're not going to do any stretching or manipulating, but what we can do is work on the knee here. So if we zoom in even further, we can see that there are actually two manipulators right now for the knee. If you're in the show simple manipulators mode, you won't see that central circle, so make sure that you're not in that mode. And what you can do is you can either grab this green square here to increase the size or decrease the size of the articulation. And then what you can also do is use these handles inside the articulation to also adjust the curve of the knee. And you can play back and forth with those things until the knee looks uh, more like you would have it. So maybe like that. So now I'm going to select the foot in the camera view. And once again, the drawing actually got selected, but we don't want the drawing, we want the actual deformer. So we can hit B to go up one. And then we can click on the show control button again. You can also use the keyboard shortcut shift F11 or command F11 if you're using a Mac. But for me, I find clicking the button easier, so it's up to you, whatever you prefer to use. Um, so what I'm going to do is grab the handle of the curved deformer and then pull it upwards to flatten the foot. And I'm going to continue doing the same thing for the other side.
So right now I'm finding that the fist is a little bit too close to the face. So what I'm going to do is grab this green square here and pull to stretch the arm out a bit so that as I rotate, the fist won't hit so close to the face. I um, mean, you may have also noticed that I've gone into the data view to adjust the Z position for uh, both the hand and the arm, and you do that on the drawing and not on the deformation group. And I keep selecting the drawing as you see, hitting B to go up a level, so I'm actually on the deformation group for that drawing. I show the controls, and then I continue to animate. So in order to be able to find a drawing in the timeline view, you have to make sure it's selected with the transform tool because you're looking for the drawing and not the deformation group. And that's when you can click on this button here, center on selection, to find the drawing so that you can do the Z nudging on it. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Alt, down arrow, up arrow to nudge backwards and forwards, um, but I actually prefer using the data view to see the precise increment as I make it. So this is a good example where you could use the auto fold to get rid of that crease uh, that you don't want. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now because I'm going to show you how to do a, a simple animation, but that's exactly where you would put it in. And you can always go back to add a fold to the arm after you've animated. You can do all your blocking first and then go back and refine all the details. So now we're in a position where we can take a look at one of the curved deformers. So one of the things I still haven't shown you um, is both stretching and how to use the handles. So you can always grab the end, the square here that's at the end of your deformer to stretch the body part or to squash it for that matter. Um, and then you can also use the handles 
to change the actual form. So if I want the karate rabbit's feet to look more like he's pointing his toes, I can do something like this. Maybe even a little bit less extreme, something like that, um, to give him that, that jump. And unfortunately, we don't have a chain of curved deformers for this particular rig. We only have single curved deformers, such as in the feet and on the ears. However, if we did have a chain of curved deformers, you could actually hold down the controlled key to have the handles follow each other um, so that the wave is like a continuous undulation. Or you can use Alt when you grab one of the handles to break the handles so that there's a sharp corner in the chain. And right now these are all set to stop motion keyframes, so let's turn these all into motion keyframes by right clicking and selecting set motion keyframe. So now all the drawings are actually interpolated as we go between. So at this position, I'm going to send the arm backwards again. So let's look for just the drawing in the drawing view. So we're going to bring it back to zero so it flicks behind um, as, as we would like to do with the hand. And I actually want to change the hand again uh, back to the straight position. And let's go back when I make it the front hand. And actually, just to emphasize what you can do with the deformation, let's actually stretch these arms out and maybe the legs a bit so that as he's jumping upwards, it looks like his body parts are being stretched and pulled down by gravity. And because the hands don't have deformers, you can in fact select them with the transform tool and rotate them from their pivot point. So these ones are okay, so you really have to be aware um, which body parts have a deformer so that when you see the pink box you don't animate um, and you do go up a level to animate with the deformation rig and which body parts such as the hands, the tail, the head that don't have deformers and that it's, it's fine for you to animate using the transform tool. I'm actually going to hide all deformers for a minute because I'd like to see just the deformer for this leg so that I can pull it down and make it long. And I think this keyframe might be a bit far. Let's uh, drag it back a bit so that the movement happens quicker. So I'm having trouble with this leg here. I'm not really sure why its skeleton was positioned out. So I'm just going to finish with the ears and then I'll take a look at that leg. So if you remember, the ears do have a deformation skeleton. So you can rotate 
and then maybe even rotate all the way back behind the head, pull down. So this one will probably have to be pushed back a bit, although it doesn't look that bad being over the shoulders, but you can also push it back a bit and you can straighten it out a bit because the aerodynamic force of the jump is pulling on the ears maybe uh, quite strongly. And you can reposition it to hide the tip. Hide all deformers again. So it looks like the ears snap without um, having any motion keyframing, so we should look for where the ears are and make sure that they have motion tweening between them. Uh, I see why it's because I did it on the wrong frame. I was one frame off. So what I can do is I can grab this keyframe uh, and I can copy it. And then I can go to this keyframe here and do a paste special. And hit enter. And then I can get rid of the keyframe here, which I don't need. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll copy this keyframe. And I'll do a paste special again. So you can get the idea of what you can do with your character. And then to get rid of this frame, I'm just going to uh, click on the Remove Keyframe button. Oh, there they got rid of it. That was strange. It was probably just the uh, software taking some time to delete that keyframe. Okay, so obviously you can take time at this point then uh, to put in the auto fold. Uh, maybe push back the ears, uh, see what's going on with the skeleton, stuff like that. Uh, but you have an idea of how to use a deformation skeleton and how to animate using the deformation skeleton. So the last thing that I wanted to mention is that you can do all this animating in the layer properties panel uh, for these various body parts. Um, but I think most people do find it more intuitive to use the transform tool in the camera view. So I think I'm going to leave the tutorial there. So that's it for the tutorial, manipulating a deformer to create animation, and it's also the last video in the deformation video series.